so if you're trying to become a surf photographer, I need to tell you that you have to have a passion for it. Hi everyone and welcome to the Wario Academy. My name is Maria Fernanda and I will be talking today about surf photography and I'm going to share a little bit about my story and how I end up doing what I do. After watching this video, I hope you come out with three main things. One is going to be how to capture the excitement and the energy of the moment. I'm also going to talk about how to use your gear for your benefit. Of course, how to prepare mentally and physically to be shooting for an action sport. Surf photography is the art of documenting surfing either from land or water. It's trying to capture that raw energy, that speed, that um, excitement, that emotion, and all the elements in it in a single moment, in a single image. And there are so many differences between other types of photography and surf photography. Just to start off with the most simple one is that in other types of photography, you can control the environment. You choose a setting, you choose your subject and where is he going to stand or where is he going to be? Even landscape, it's not going to move as fast as being in the water or even shooting from land and surfing. When you shoot water photography or surfing photography, everything is moving and you cannot really control it. The water is moving, so if you're in the water shooting, you're going to be moving too. So you have your own movement and then your subject, in this case the surfer, um, are going to be moving. Like the surfer is going to be moving towards you with a very high speed, while the wave that he's in is going to be moving also at its own pace. All of this while you trying to get a good position to shoot both of this and trying to also control the lighting, right? Because the lighting, it's, you know, going to be shifting also depending on the wave. So if it's evening and the wave um, is going to be blocking the sun, the lighting is going to change from one second to another because sometimes you will have this orange look and once the wave starts covering that sun, you're going to get a more greenish look or um, brown. So. You have to know all these things so you can get the result you're looking for in water photography. Okay, so if you're trying to become a surf photographer, I need to tell you that you have to have a passion for it. It's going to be a lot of sacrificing, a lot of commitment, a lot of um, time that you're gonna put into this because it's not just about um, you know clicking a button you have to like I said before know about the sport and train for it especially shooting from the water you have to be well trained for it not just physically but also mentally why because you're also in the ocean with the athlete and you are gonna be swimming so you're gonna have to be I don't know a couple hours in the water using all your energy and your body to be there so you have to be in top shape you have to be fit you have to be ready to be swimming for hours on end maybe cold water hot water or warm water but you um have to learn to know your body you know you, you have to be hydrated not get cramps in the water because that can be very dangerous too and um and like i said it's not just physically but you have also to prepare mentally and so I've taken a lot of apnea courses and breathing exercises because that is so important for your physical strength and your physical preparation, but also for your mental preparation. That gives you a lot of peace of knowing what you're doing and also being trained physically gives you peace mentally, right? Because you know that you're ready for any situation and you can handle any situation that comes your way. So it is very important to be trained for that. And for that, I usually swim because that's what you're going to be doing. 
Um, I use a lot of my legs. I try to train with fins. When I'm not in the ocean, I would train in the water, like in a pool, river, lake. And I do it with my fins. Um, I run to, and I try to do other um, sports where they require a lot of, you know, um, using your lungs and expanding them. And so, yeah, a lot of aerobic activities where you can just get your body ready for being in the water a couple hours at a time. How do you prep up for a shoot, a surf photographer shoot? Um, you would have to do it in advance and not just because you have to set a date and everything, but it's because it depends what day you're gonna set on how the waves are gonna be acting. And there are so many ways, ways to predict that. You know, you can go online and there's many websites where they're gonna tell you how the weather is gonna be, um, how it's gonna, the wind is gonna be blowing, what direction, what speed. And you also need to know how the swell is coming, right? If there's gonna be big waves, if there are gonna be small waves, the direction of them. Um, is the wave where you're planning to shoot gonna be working good? And so all these things, you can plan them ahead with more precision around two weeks ahead of it. Um, but you gotta have in mind that everything can change the day of the shoot. So you always have to be ready to improvise and maybe that day don't shoot the action um, sports, or just do some lifestyle um, or just reschedule, you know, because it's going to be so hard to control all these factors because you're dealing with nature. Besides that, the whole planning ahead and the two, day, two weeks in advance and everything, you've also got to, you know, prepare your gear because you're not talking about just of your camera. There's a lot of gear involved in surf photography. Um, first of all, I have here some of my gear. Um, it's the housing. The housing is the cover for your camera so you can go underwater. This is for my Sony. This is the one I use for my Nikon. Um, this is made of aluminum and it is especially for surfing. There depends what type of water photography you're doing. There are different cases for surf photography and diving photography. This is because for diving you need a housing that can handle pressure and for surfing you need a housing that can handle hits. You're gonna be, you know, like in constant movement and you can hit either rock, sand, reef or many other things, right? So you have to be ready for that and you have to protect your camera from that. And so that's why we use this housing. Um, I love shooting, especially surfing with the trigger we call is the trigger let me show you the other trigger so it's almost we call it a pistol grip and you shoot and that's when you take the photo and it's so much easier to have this shooting surfing because um, when everything's moving and you are on surface level of the ocean with this it allows you to lift your hand a little bit above your head and have a different perspective and shoot from above. So that's why I usually use the trigger. Um, I also love having the handle because this one you can hold it when you're going through the waves. After you took your shot, you want to dive under the wave so you don't get stuck over the falls. And that's where I use my handle. This is the port and it is very important to keep an eye on it all the time. The port is what protects the lens and if you have a tiny drop of water, it can affect your entire shoot. So you can be in the perfect position, right? And the surfer is taking an amazing wave, the wave is beautiful, you have the perfect lighting and everything, and you think you shoot the perfect image. But once you go into your computer and starting developing the photos and editing, you realize you have a little tiny drop of water in the middle of the lens. And the whole image is gonna come out bad. 
it's gonna be all blurry, it's gonna be out of focus, and that's one of the things that you always have to keep an eye on, having your port clean. And there's different types of um, doing that. There's people that shoot with dry port, and there's people that shoot with wet port. Um, I usually shoot with dry port since my port is flat. When you have the dome, that's when people usually shoot with a uh, wet board. And there are different things to keep it working properly. Um, when you have dry board, you usually use some wax or oil to have it clean without any drop of water. And even if a, wa a wave splashes on you, the drops will, you know, fall off and leave your board free of any imperfection. So, little trick i put some surf wax on the side and so when i'm in the water every i don't know three five minutes i put some on my finger and i rub it on my port there's people that use candle wax there's people that use sunblock there's many tricks but for me this one has worked and that's the one that i use so far Define your subject, define if you're just shooting the wave, if you're shooting a specific surfer, and anticipate for what they're gonna do. That's why it's so important to know the sport. Like I said before, I wasn't raised in surf culture, or like in surf lifestyle, or sport even. For me, it was all new, so I had to learn the sport because you are working with high speed all the time. So you have to be able to anticipate what's gonna happen. You need to know what the maneuvers are gonna be. You need to know what the surfer is gonna do, if he's gonna do a trick, if he's gonna do an air, if he's gonna get barreled. And so for that, you need to know the sport so you can be in the correct position to get the perfect shot. I usually use my shutter speed high because everything is in movement. So my photo doesn't look like uh, it's all blurry or moved or everything. So I never use it below a thousand. Um, I usually go from a thousand to two thousand. And from there, I um, usually shoot in the mornings when the waves are better. And so most cases you have really sunny mornings, uh, beautiful morning with light and everything. So I my settings would be around, I don't know, let's say, 2000 for speed for shutter speed and then i would do maybe 200 iso and what i would shift and what i usually move is just my focus right so what i usually um just change or adapt in moment it would be my f settings right um and it depends if i want to be just getting the surfer focused or if i want to have the whole wave and the whole scenery also in there. Um, but because I'm working with high moving objects, um, I usually don't lower it from like a six, um, just to make sure everything is in focus and it's not just his face or it's not just his feet, you know, but the whole subject is in focus and usually I like the wave to be in it too. The, you know, the background um, doesn't need to be there sometimes, like a sharp or in focus or whatever. Um, but it depends what you're going for. And if you're in a place where it's super important that it's seen that's that special town or that special, um, I don't know, cliff or mountains in the back. So well, what I adjust or move in the moment would be my F7. For me, I use the 3D. I have a Nikon D800, and that's because I want to be focusing on the moving subject, which in this case is a surfer. So with that, it allows me to be tracking my subject in movement towards me. And that's the settings that I use for my camera and has worked for years. Also, the light. The light is really important of get, getting a very unique photo. 
um, especially in surf photography, you know, like I was saying earlier, um, depends on the movement of the sun, the waves and everything is going to be the light that you're going to have. So if you're shooting in the morning, you're usually going to have bright, um, water blue usually, and you're going to see a little bit more through the ocean. Um, if you're shooting in the evening, you're probably not going to be able to see through the ocean. It's going to probably a more greenish look and you're going to have to uh, know where the sun is setting and how fast, like what time is sundown so you can prepare for that, you know, because once it's getting super dark, um, it is hard to get some good photos, especially because you're uh, working with high speed. Well, high shutter speed so um yeah if you want to have a good session you have to know what time the sun comes up what time the sun comes down and prepare accordingly okay so what lens to use it all depends on the type of photography you're trying to work on sometimes you want to uh, portray the place that you're shooting you want to get all the scenery in there you know like if you have a beautiful town in the back and you want the wave uh, to be in a corner but you want the city or the town to be in the photo too then you're not gonna need a long lens of course right because you want to have everything in there if you just want to shoot the surfer and like focus more on his movements and on his body post posture, um, then you're, of course, going to need more of a wide angle. Um, for me, in particular, wide angles are great, but they distortion the wave, the size of the wave. Um, so I don't usually use that often. Um, I actually don't have any fisheye lenses, but there's um, many really great photographers that love using fisheye and especially when you're shooting barrels and like the surfer is inside of the wave could then you can see the hole and you can feel you're in the barrel with the surfer you can feel the wave covering you um, for me my style I do more of a natural look and I love to keep my images real I want to portray to the viewer what I'm experiencing in the moment and make him feel like he's in there with me. So um, I try to use more of a 50 lens, you know, because that gives you uh, that feeling of just looking there. Like if you're watching a photo with a 50 lens, you feel like you're in the moment. You see everything that the photographer is seeing. And so that's one of my favorite lenses for surf photography because you get the whole wave, you get um, the size of the wave and you usually get something also of the scenery in the back. So that's what I use, but I have my 24 to 85 lens, which is very versatile for me. I usually use that one, um, but sometimes I like using my long lens in the water too. I gotta say it's heavier and it's really hard to swim with that. Uh, but the photos look amazing. It's a 70 to 200, so you can imagine if this is a 24 to 85, how big the other lens is and how heavy. So swimming with that is definitely a challenge and you have to be more careful with it because, I mean, in the water, this can even be, you know, like a danger to yourself because it can hit you, it can knock you out or, um, yeah can not be as great so you gotta be uh, very careful when you swim out with a longer lens or a heavier gear but the way uh, the wave and how it looks with that lens it is amazing because you can be a little bit farther and you still feel like you're close to the surfer and to the wave so I use that for bigger waves where I don't want to be as close to the subject and I want to see it on the channel or the wave is really fast so that way it gives me and allows me to be a little bit farther and still feel like I am there in the action.
So some of my other gear I use for ocean, you know, photography and like surf photography is like I show you the housing with my camera. I have two different housings and this um, is for my smaller camera. This is for my Nikon. And you always have to use fins because you're going to be floating not just yourself, but you're going to be carrying your gear, which is very heavy. So you want to be able to swim and move fast and not sink. You want to be able to escape from the waves. So fins are always a must when you're swimming with your gear out in the water. Um, and the pants, I like big waves and that's my specialty. So for that, I usually um, use a helmet, depends on what type of um, bottom I'm working with. If it's sand, I usually don't use a helmet, but if it's um, rocks, reef, or something harder, I try to use a helmet just for protection. I don't love to use it though, because I feel like I'm not being able to hear completely. Um, and also when you come up, to breathe after diving, you have a little curtain of water in your eyes for like a second that for me that is so important in some ways where um, you want to be aware of everything that's happening around you. So this is my helmet and in some occasions I um, also use a vest. It's an impact vest and it also helps you protect your ribs and everything. Um, important of your body and it helps you float a little bit too so it helps you swim a little faster and um, but it is a little harder to dive so I also don't use it all the time I choose when and where um, so it's usually when there's a lot of water moving that I use it um, in shore breaks I don't love to use it because I want to be fast and being able to dive under the waves and be you know more alert so these are other parts of my gear um, especially when shooting big waves okay so well some tips when you go underwater with your housing I usually hold it next to my leg hold it from the handle put it next to my leg and I try to dive with one of my arms, well, of course, the one that's not holding the camera, um, in front of your face so you protect your face and it can be either from the ground or at the bottom of the ocean or from other surfers or, or surfboards. So when you come up to breathe, even though I open my eyes underwater, you don't see as clear. So I always like to put a hand in front of me just to know and to protect my face from anything, or my head from anything that can bump into. Uh, and my camera goes next to my leg really tight, so I don't hit myself with it when I'm going through the waters. When I'm shooting, um, I'm pointing to the subject. I try to look through it, especially when I'm shooting like from 50 up. Because of course you're, you know, a little single tiny movement that you are going to get when you are in the water um, can get your subject out of the position that you want it to. So this is how I shoot. I hold one hand and then the other I try to move my camera and give it some direction. Um, when you're shooting fisheye, you know, or wider angle, you can definitely just hold your camera and shoot your subject and you're probably just gonna get your subject in there. Okay, so my inspiration comes from God's nature. God's creation is so amazing. And for me, the ocean is one of his most majestic <laughs> creations, right? And when you're in the water, you feel so alive. And it's just an amazing feeling. And that's something that Water photography has given me that and being able to connect with so many people around the world and um, visiting all these amazing places. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to keep doing this, I my only advice for you is to really want to pursue it, to have a dream and a passion for it because that's what, what's going to keep you going and pushing and trying to get better photos. Um, 
and you're gonna have ups and downs in this career, you know, it's like those amazing moments, but you, you also will probably encounter some accidents and, you know, little hip, hiccups around um, the corner because you are dealing with nature and you're dealing with some extreme situations. So um, for me, it was, I had a knee injury. I tore my ACL, MCL and meniscus a couple years ago and it was a long recovery and it also made me realize that yes, I wanted to keep doing this even though I could have these um, injuries or these accidents happen to me, but they were all worth it, right? Because I get so much out of it that it's just a small price you have to pay. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please, Keep watching these masterclasses through Weddy Academy and hope you learn a lot more through all this amazing people and teachers that are gonna share more with us about photography. And if you wanna know more um, about my work and follow my work and just what I'm doing, where I'm heading and my future projects, please follow me on Instagram. I'm as Maria Fernanda Photo, all of it together. Also, you can find my work on my website, www.mariafernandaphoto.com. Thank you so much again for joining us, and please don't forget to keep logging in and subscribe so you can keep watching these videos. Thank you so much.